uh, not tonight. I will <laughs> never live that down. We are live, guys. Careful what you say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? I don't mind sharing it live. <laughs> it's TGIF. Oh, it's so exciting to be here on a Friday night with our favorite people, um, Ron Block. <laughs> Yay! Um, our librarian and our special guest tonight for the first portion of the show, Patty Callahan Henry. Hi, welcome everyone. Patty. Happy, happy Friday. And welcome everybody Hi, who's joining us. I hope you are really ready for a Friday evening of fun and uh, book recommendations yeah. and all kinds of stuff. And shenanigans. Shenanigans are probably shenanigans. going to Ooh, happen. Ron has a specialty. Did you guys what know it? It's what is it? It's shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I, I got that. I got that. <laughs> we did. A, we did. We had a lot of shenanigans here in Cleveland, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I bet. I was going to ask about those portions that y'all would like to share. <laughs> How was Cleveland? It was yeah. awesome. Patty? No, it was, it was awesome. I'm going to I'm going to brag on Ron. So, you okay. know, number one, I mean, now I know everybody knows he's a rock star librarian, but I don't think everybody knows that the Cuyahoga library system is the number one library system in, in the country. The country. Mm -hmm. I actually Yay. did know that. Congratulations. So he had, you. you know, the, they, he had the four of the ladies there, you know, the, all four of us and Meg Walker came and he had us all for a big event at the library and it was packed house and he led led the whole conversation like he was Andy Cohen and um <laughs> it was so much fun it was and, you know, so much fun and you know I we had all major FOMO I was like it was fun you guys and so great. many friends and fiction people showed up it was just and they drove and lots of book club members too yeah and a lot yeah. of the friends and fiction book club members and they yes. drove from everywhere like from washington dc to illinois they you know yeah. some people and michigan, and michigan yes wisconsin it was crazy it was great it was great but we oh. missed you too we yeah was, you should have been there but, but the best part of the whole thing was seeing so many people happy in one space yes. like it's Aww. been so long and it wasn't just the people um that came to the event. It was all of us that were running the event and in, in, in the event. We were just, it was just happiness all around. Yep. Oh, and everybody was like so that's happy. That's what always is with all of us. When we come see Patty or we go see yeah. Kristen or Mary Kay or Christy, everyone's so it's happy. Like, it's just the love that Friends in Fiction brings to everyone, you know? Absolutely. And people are saying, best. Oh, I know your name, like from, you know, the comments or whatever. Yes. Oh, yeah, it was. Fun. Oh, that's so much fun. I mean, I was telling Lisa the other day that I was having FOMO, you know, fear of missing out, but it really wasn't FOMO. It was just the Mo. Yeah. Because we you, we <laughs> you actually were missing out. Yeah, yes. yeah we were. <laughs> we were. And but we guess what? We can't, we, we just, all we can't were. go to everything. And it's so funny. Yeah. We were we were joking like it was like a, I was telling them it was like a um, fizzy bottle got shook up and then we all said goodbye and we all went to the four corners of the world. Kristen oh, went yeah. to Tallahassee. I am right now in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Mary Kay went to Charleston. Christy went, had something in Wilmington, I think. And it was just yeah, like yeah. we were all together and then boom in four different, you know, four different events from there. And I stayed behind. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have stayed. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. It would have been fun. Yeah. There'll you be more. There's going to be lots it. more. Yep. Lots more yeah. coming. Yeah. And you have New Jersey coming up in just uh, two, weeks. Two, weeks. two weeks. Yeah. Yay. So that's kind of, of exciting too. too. There's yeah. a whole big contingent of book club members who are making the trek from. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. coming for you up there. Yeah. Oh, Good. It's going to be so fun. And it's the Jersey Shore. So there's the beach and it's Madison right. and. Manasquan, 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 and Bruce I Springsteen. Know. I mean, he's he's definitely. I mean, I tried to tell him I was coming. I'm not sure he got my message, but you know, oh, I'll be would, waiting for you when you get there. Well, cheers, we won't. Don't want to that. ruin the surprise, but he contacted me, and he is. Oh, he. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, cheers to that. Up, up. <laughs> I know, right? Speaking of cheers, are you ready? Yes. yes. What do we do? Hour. Oh, you know what, very Ron? Beginning. We, we don't have a word of the night. <gasps> What's our oh, word of the night oh, going to be? I, I don't think. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Book club friends, we need your help. Put in the chat what you think the word of the night should be. Okay. So that whenever we say it, we have to take a sip. We're going to let you guys. You guys are going to decide. It can't, it can't be book or we're in big trouble. It cannot right. be book. It cannot be book. Well, it wasn't. Uh, wait, wait, yeah, it was no, so it can't funny. be book. Oh, when, when Mary Kay was on with the Santa suit, it was Santa. Oh, the best. <laughs> That's was, a good way to end up in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> the best was Nancy Johnson <laughs> because she was drinking a mocktail like Brenda. So she just kept saying kind. Oh, was that's right. She, or lie? I don't know, but she kept it was saying one of the it. Two. It's not nice. <laughs> and Ron kept having a drink. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, Funny. Okay, so okay. tonight we're having a special cocktail. We Ooh. start out with with two ounces of fresh squeezed lime juice. Okay. Um, yeah, well, but he demonstrates. Yeah, I'm already sold on the lime. I was going to say, is it fresh squeezed? Yes, it is. Oh, how about this? Anybody know what this is? Um, uh, all? No. It's, um, it's homemade <laughs> rhubarb simple syrup. As if I would have wow. figured that out. I never would have guessed. That would not have been my guess. Which is so <laughs> easy to make. It's really just rhubarb, sugar, and water. Rhubarb really? simple syrup. Okay. Yep. yep. And then we're going to Mexico. It was well, Cinco de Mayo. The day after Cinco de Mayo. So we got it. <laughs> Wait, no, today it no. Today is Seis de Mayo. <laughs> yes. I don't know yeah, what day it is. I don't know what city I'm in. I know nothing. My that favorite so tequila. Wild. And then how much? How much to what? Oh, ounce and a half of tequila, like. <laughs> two ounces of rhubarb syrup, and two ounces of lime juice. Okay. And oh my and, gosh. And one ounce of Grand Marnier. This sounds Yum. really good. He makes the best cocktails. I wanted to do the <gasps> PB and J tonight, but I didn't have all the ingredients, so I'll have to keep you. Wait, posted. I have an idea. What? Friends and fiction cocktail book. Yes. Of recipes. Yes. Mocktails we can totally cocktails. do that from every happy hour. Oh my we gosh, totally we could. could. Friends the and Kelly fiction Kapowski happy hour cocktail. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have the Kelly Kapowski on there. Okay, and that's it. You just great. put a okay, yeah. pink Himalayan salt rimmed glass with a lime my wheel. My favorite. Oh, my and gosh. And away so we go. Oh, my gosh. That looks so good. So there's your rhubarb burrito. Cheers. Oh, oh my God. I can't wait to come. I want to, like, here, try again. Hand it yeah. to me. You can well, do- that puts my little, I had a little margarita last night and I was like, I have to take it a little easier. So I have truly lemonade that I have turned into cherry lemonade. Oh. The cherry and a little cherry, or what is it? The cherry juice. I don't know. My brain still isn't working. So that's cherry what I have. juice. What is the stuff in the cherries? Maraschino. Mar- yeah, that's oh. like that. What is it called? That's a candied. That's a candied cherry. It's just like the right? juice from it. I don't. I don't. Think yeah, it they call it something. Oh, I know I don't what know. Grenad, Is it grenadine? Grenadine. Yes, yes grenadine. Okay. The doctor knows the answer. How did that happen? <laughs> hey, yeah. grenadine is what a Shirley Temple is made from. That's where it got oh, famous. Oh, well, maybe that's maybe that's, that's right up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. speaking of. Speaking of, I will share mine because it was Cinco de Mayo yesterday and I didn't get to celebrate. This is a non-alcoholic strawberry daiquiri. Oh, yum. yum. I hadn't really made them from scratch before. This is uh, fresh strawberries with some lime juice yum. and um, a simple syrup and a little splash of 7-Up. Look at you. Is that from the book that you've been using? Actually, this one was from the internet, but I love that book that Anissa gave me. It's been given me several good recipes. Yeah. Awesome. Well. well, I'm at somebody else's house. I'm not at home. So I got nothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't even have that. But I made Ron on 
Monday, what night were, were we together for dinner at mm. Paula's house? Tuesday night. Tuesday night, <gasps> Ron came over and we had dinner at Paula McLean's house, you know, Paris wife, Paula McLean. And um, Paula and I made from scratch French yes. 75s. And they were delicious. Oh. Gin. That sounds amazing. So I can tell you the recipe and pretend, right? Some oh, yeah. simple syrup, <laughs> some fresh squeezed lemon juice, some gin, <laughs> shake it up, <laughs> pour it in a glass, then pour real champagne on top with the twist of lemon. You have to use your imagination. Oh, yeah. I, I'll just use my memory. It was so good. There you go. I know. That Gosh. sounds wonderful. Yeah. It was so good. Well, you guys, our, I love our members. We have so many great suggestions for our word of the night. But even before I go there, they are all in for the cocktail recipe book. Everyone is excited about that. The next so here are some of, the, some of the words they suggested were FOMO. Oh, <laughs> cheers. There we go. No, Doom, no. Cleveland. Oh. Shenanigans. Uh-oh. That might be that might be the winner. That's a winner. Or yeah. You want to go with shenanigans? Let's go there with shenanigans. Is. Oh, what can I always work from shenanigans into the shenanigans it is? Take a Let's all try and work that nonchalantly into a um yes. sentence. We put it in the book recommendations and say, and shenanigans ensue. <laughs> There that's you go. True of so now you guys have to take a drink. He just said that's it. it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I feel like I have an unfair advantage, but I do this with know. water too. I have I an even better TV. advantage. I have nothing. <laughs> you could just have your pretend French she's, 75. Okay. She's got the fake, right. the fake old school. I have, yeah. I have, I have the imaginary French 75. <laughs> and go, ah. Mwah. Well, Patty, well, we definitely would love to hear about your tour for the paperback of Surviving Savannah. How has that been going? We love seeing all your pictures and You're talk so about good. FOMO, seeing all your pictures and how everything in your travels. Can you tell us and a little bit about your book tour? Yeah, it's been amazing because, you know, the hardcover came out during COVID. So I really didn't mm -hmm. do very immense very many events for it. And, you know, I'm not on like a full blown two week tour, but I've been doing some really fun things. And like I said, we were in Cleveland the week before that I was in San Diego. The week before that I was in Naples, Florida with Kate Quinn. And right now I'm in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I was at a junior league luncheon next week. I'm in Huntsville and Montgomery. And then Mary Kay and I are together in Birmingham at little professor. Ooh. And then she's going to spend the night with Meg and Kristen is going to come up from Tuscaloosa where she has an event and we're going to have a slumber party in my house in Birmingham. And then Birmingham's um, not far from Atlanta. Maybe I'll come I'll visit. Come visit. Come visit. It's an easy I drive come come straight there. across I-20. It's on and the then, weekend. Um, okay. <laughs> and then last but not least, it, um, it was chosen for the Books a Million book club pick. And so I'm doing a big event at the Books a Million in Montgomery, Alabama. So that's, oh yay! but it's been fun because the difference with the paperback tour, as meager as it might be, is that people have either read it or at least know about it. So you're not starting from scratch trying to explain it or like introduce it. You can talk in a deeper way about it. Like, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Where was the research? So it's been really fun. And mostly it's just been amazing to see people. Um, oh. Releasing a book during the yeah. pandemic was really, except for y'all, lonely. So. Right. Mm. Well, that is one thing yeah. that it, nothing will be the same as, as launching Friends in Fiction during that time because it is unique in that way. So, yeah. uh, and we're still feeling it. I was, um, like I said, at that luncheon today and I'm in Pennsylvania. And for some reason, you know, when I brought it up, I said, who here knows about friends and fiction? And of course some people did, but a lot of people didn't. And I don't know if it's because it's a different region or, and so I told them all about it and about your book club and, 
And every single woman pulled out her phone and was like, because if you realize that there's a community of people like y'all, you want to be part of it. We can tell when you guys have talked about us somewhere because we get a little jump in people joining or participating. It'll be like silent and then it'll say, 13 people you're like whoa what happened they're like patty patty what they said something talk about us today (laughs) that's awesome that's awesome yeah that's funny funny. so did we did we decide that um the s word was our official word do you mean the word shenanigans why is it (laughs) the person without a cocktail in their hand always says it the most (laughs) yep because i want to see more shenanigans Mm. I put the wrong straw. Look at this. I'm so like eco friendly. That is for like a big water bottle. I know. I I don't know. I told you guys my brain's not working today. (laughs) It's Friday. It's the end of the week. You look beautiful. So this counts. Thank you. It's been a long. I've been looking forward to this. So week I have. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Oh, and we're almost twenty minutes. Do you want to get into some book recommendations? I think I was just going to say we're almost 20 minutes in and we have had a book recommendation. Oh my gosh. Uh Uh-oh. People are getting antsy. Um, Well, I have a great book, Rec. Um, There's this new book out in paperback called Surviving... No, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) (laughs) We've recommended that that book so many times. Yeah. We, um, well, first, I just want to talk real quick, because, of course, the Home Wreckers is out this week. Yes. And I meant to talk about it on the stage in Cleveland, Ron, and I completely forgot. But um, she put all kind of Easter eggs in that book. She did. Like, um, there's a license plate that says PCH in it. And um, one of the characters is named that, after yeah. my son. And then there's a Christy and Will. And Christy is pregnant with twins. So yeah, she, they're like, not, not nice. Not nice. So <laughs> she has, you know, if you haven't read it yet, y'all, which of course I'm sure you have, but if you haven't read the home records yet, you'll find all kinds of friends and fiction Easter eggs. Hidden that in is it. so fun. You will. You will. I have my copy. I haven't <laughs> read it yet. Oh, you're going to love but it. I'm, I'm going to, you know, it's our, it's our book club for June. So. Yeah, I'm trying to wait till June, but I might actually read it early because I've been waiting. <laughs> so May I'm is uh, widely May. cash, right? Yes. yes. Okay. I can't wait to we get to that very one. Excited. We'll, we'll right. recap that too in a little while, but definitely, yes, widely cash is our next pick. Speaking of things like that, it was so funny too, Patty, when, um, when we were reading through the wedding veil and yeah. in the middle of <laughs> I know it, you're there's, say. yeah, yeah, the character says, I, I joined the Friends and Fiction Book Club, and we we're like, I know, it's adorable. <laughs> We've been in the acknowledgments, but never in the, in the you know, characters. The plot. text of that. Okay, that was so the book awesome. I am loving right now, drum roll, because you know I like drum roll. I'm looking. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, that's next up for me comes out next oh, week and I was lucky enough to get an early copy and it's already been optioned for TD and oh, the wow. minute you read chapter one you will know why it, it's about a group of 1964 Hollywood people this very famous movie star brings her husband her best friend her agent her like the whole entourage and they go on a safari in Africa and things go very wrong very quick not a spoiler Um, It's like page one. So he is a master in this book of jumping right into the middle of it. And then we get every, there's seven people on the trip, plus the guide and a hunter, and you get every point of view, but the story keeps moving forward, even when we're changing points of view. And it's just so masterfully done. It's just like, I'm almost done that much that sounds good yeah it's Ooh. really really good so that's my rec that's a good one. Right. yeah that's a that's a good one to get started on <laughs> do you want to go next ron i can start i've got quite a few here so you know i i um 
I do some work with Penguin Random House, so I get some sneak peeks and talk to the authors and, and get to know some things. So see, these are things that I haven't talked about publicly yet. So we're get get your pens ready. The first one up okay, is a book. Let's mouths. see if I can do it. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. Okay. And it's by Cecily Wong. And it's okay. incredible. It's about this. Um, it's a mixed race family. Um, they're the Brightons and they live in Oregon and they have two daughters that are very, very different, but they're also very, very close. So Morgan is the beautiful one that wants to be a fashion designer. And um, Riley is the one who is kind of a kind of nerdy and kind of whatever, but they kind of both of the girls go to New York for college and the parents come with them. So while they're back home, they have a store called Kaleidoscope and it's representative of all the different things from around the world in the store. So if you think Think about a kaleidoscope oh. all of the colors and the shapes and the light are different and that they then they move to new york and start an enterprise so it's online and it's different stores around the country and it's all these things and it's just they get very successful and morgan uh not morgan riley is the one who's kind of different and she's kind of a loner and one of the favorite parts of the book for me is in this is she does something called twenty dollars a day in new york city and she figures out how to see as many different things as she can, eat as many different foods all through the city in New York. And it's so cool. And it's, by the end, you, you want to do it yourself too. But then there's a really big tragedy that happens. So it sets the whole family on this path to realize that that the stories they've always been told and the, the, the life they thought they had really isn't what it was. So it's this whole self-discovery. Oh so good. I know, it's that sounds great. Phenomenal. I mean, um, I think one of the big bl uh, blurbers for this is Celeste Ng. So oh, know, wow. it, it, it's already gotten starred reviews from Kirkus and, and um, Library Journal and PW too. So um, Cecily Wong is the author and Kaleidoscope. It comes Ooh. out July 5th. Oh, nice. Nice. That's what to look okay. forward to. Okay. And Patty, we know that you have to go, but we are so excited that you joined Already? us tonight. I know. I have a minute. I have another six minutes. Oh, you oh, do? Right. I want to hear one more book wreck. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm a guest <laughs> of somebody's and we have dinner reservations, so I'm going to have to bolt. But I want to hear, I want to hear it, want another book. I'm writing these down. Okay. okay. Do you want to go, Brent, or do we want another one from Ron? I think we know the answer to that. Yeah. What? No, I want to hear y'all. Okay, I want to hear <laughs> yeah, y'all. Yeah, I, I do too. <laughs> okay, Brenda, you go ahead. Okay, I will go. Okay, my recommendation is called Any Other Family. Oh, I love that Eleanor cover. Brown, and she Pretty. is the author of The Weird Sisters, if anyone read that. And it's, I think it's, I picked it because it's a subject close to my heart. It's about three different adoptive families, but they adopted biological siblings. And the story revolves around how they have their own families, but intertwine with the biological siblings family. So it's, it's really about how families are found and formed. And um, I adopted my daughter when she was six. And so this really resonated with me. Oh, I didn't know that. Cool. I didn't know um, that either. Uh, thanks for sharing that. That's so thanks. sweet. Can you repeat the title and the author one? Yes. Time? Any other family? Eleanor Brown. Love it. Awesome. And it comes out July 12th. You're giving well, us all the July books, you two. At least the book yeah, I recommend, it comes out like next that. week. Next week. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one that came out this week. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Well, my right, book, I am, I'm stepping outside of, of the norm here, and I'm recommending a nonfiction book. Oh, good. Only because it is a great gift for girls for graduation or people starting new careers. It's called The Epic Mentor Guide. Oh, nice. And basically, it's about 180 different lady bosses. Some are famous, some are not. CEOs. Um, like I know some of yeah. the, the known names are like Tyra Banks and they've got reporters, scientists, just so many strong women that have opened so many doors for other women to give advice. And they ask questions about life. And I feel like it's a sneak into the workforce for 
for young girls. I came across it because I like quote books. And when I started reading it, I absolutely love it because they'll ask a question and then they'll have an answer from a different, from different people in different backgrounds. So I'm giving this to, well, Ooh. hopefully she's not watching my best friend's daughter who's graduating from college uh, this year and going to Boom, Boston. gave it away. She's a lady boss. I'm going to give it to her. It's a good graduation gift. It's called the Epic Mentor Guide by Alana Rea. Nice. And I did, I bookmarked one quote that I love because I have an issue with saying no. I don't know why it's so hard <laughs> for women sometimes to say no. We say no and then give the whole excuse. Well, right. then, then my family, then, you know, but, but, and just like, no. Yeah, you can't just yeah. say no. You feel like you have to have a reason or an excuse. So this, the question was, what do you want girls starting in the work world to remember when they hear the word no? And Bobby Brown, the, the makeup artist and founder of Jones Road Beauty, not, not the R&B singer, <laughs> <laughs> she said... No one likes to be told no. So give yourself a minute to breathe and process it. Then turn the no into an I can. Start uh -huh. to think of a new plan, find a different door. And if you can't find a door, look for a window. Sometimes it's the sign to do something completely different. Be diligent and trust your next move. And I was like, oh, I just love that. There's so many nuggets like that in this book. It's it's a good one to have. So it's my that's reason. awesome. It's like yeah, a devotional okay. almost. You could something you could read again and again and again. Yeah. Just to kind and of get inspired. Way that wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and when you have... said nonfiction, it made me think the other book I would have totally recommend, would totally recommend right now came out, I guess about a month ago. Ron and I interviewed her in nonfiction. Well, that for sure. But um, Mary Laura Philpott's Bomb Shelter. It oh. is. No, oh, it is so good. It is oh, just. Ron's got it. Yeah. There it is. It's, it's so magic good. the way he does that. It, I know. It, no, it's like that he has book, a magic hat of books. Of uh, books, yes. I can manifest books. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that, that book blew me away. And I've, I've been recommending it to everybody. And, and then even I've. Um, I've gone back and read parts again because I see interviews with her and I go, oh, I didn't know about that angle. She's just yeah. a brilliant writer <laughs> and, a, and a great observer of the human condition in a way, too, that like she looks at things very differently. Well, not only that, but she takes very ordinary moments that we all kind of we feel them deeply, but we don't think we can talk about them because they're not like I moved to Italy, you know, and she. Right. She takes these ordinary moments and just does this extraordinary dive into what it means to be human. It's just such a good book. I like it. Oh, I love that sounds it. Sounds awesome. Adding that one. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even interviewing her too. Like she's just so genuine and so, so real. And, um, and, she, and of course, if you, on the cover, there's Frank the turtle. And that is the, one of the, my favorite <laughs> parts of the book. It's a real um, turtle in her backyard. It's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, I love it's so cool. turtles. And okay, he knocks you guys, on I'm going to sneak off and okay. then I'm going to watch the rest Thank of the you. video. And happy Friday. You guys are simply the best. We love you. you. Are. Have fun oh, on book tour. Love you, Patty. Okay, and everybody go get on. Surviving Savannah and paperback. And yes. y'all don't, um, I'm going to have some FOMO. Don't have too many shenanigans without me. <laughs> oh, parting shot. Is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. And the shenanigans continue. Stop it. And, <laughs> oh my gosh. I love her. I will say my, my daiquiri is a little lime forward. I like the lime. But I don't I mind that. Good lime flavor. I don't mind that. I'm liking it. I just, it's different. Gotcha. Okay, oh, now goodness. what? Now what? We've now got what? Now what? Oh, we don't know. a few Who's in comments charge? in the, um, in the chat. chat. Mary says, happy Mother's Day weekend, everyone. Yes, happy, yes, Mother's, happy Day Mother's Day weekend. weekend. Cheers to all the moms out there. Um. I love our our group. And our let me just say, too, awesome. a mom doesn't mean you have your mom's here or that you really get along with her. Pay attention to somebody who's nurtured you. 
Mm. Yes, it can. There, those are the that relationships so that mean the most. All right, I guess we should get into some more book recommend. We we do have a couple of authors watching tonight that have said hi. So hi to Leslie Hooten and hi to Kimberly Brock. Thanks oh, for watching. Hello, Leslie and Kimberly. We love you guys. And Kimberly says she agrees. She said Bomb Shelter is amazing. Yes. So I'm sure everybody's going to add that to their TBR. Oh, do it. It's essays. So you can read them like one chunk at a time. And just a, there's one about a, a, a mom who takes her, her daughter to um, college visits and um and while they're there, they hear about this woman who screamed at her daughter in front of people. And so this whole exploration of, of parents and child on this thing that everybody goes through if you have children at some point in your life. And it's just so down to earth. And so her take on it is just brilliant. I know I'm not doing a good job of selling it, but. No, you're me. doing an amazing oh, job. Yeah. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ready you want to hit us with another recommendation? I'm like, I'm, OK, guys, I'm going to be honest. I am so excited about our announcement for book club picks, but I'm, we're waiting till the end. So I'm just like, <laughs> well, here we go with the secret. Ron again. has no idea, you guys. We you're killing. To you're, Ron's reaction. you're killing me. You're killing me again. And I totally, it's my favorite thing because we get to see everyone's reaction in the chat when they comment, but we don't get to see real reactions. Mm -hmm. And me and Brenda have been. I don't even think. Like our, our book club team does not know. No. I think Joe Denna knows July, but I, I'm pretty sure August and September, no one knows except for me and Brenda and well, Kristen. Since, since you're there, do you want to give one? Do we want to do it now, Brenda? Do, do July, then we'll Let's go back to one. book recommendations. Okay. Whoop. Hold on. Let me get, let me give get me it. Let me chance get to July. pick myself up off the floor. All right, I can say you're evil. Hold, you know hold you're on, evil. hold on, hold on. Okay. I can say that this book came out this week. Oh, did it? I didn't even know that. I hope it did because I just said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, hold on. I have the wrong one up. Ah. Okay. Oh, I need to be able to share my screen. Okay, go ahead, Brenda. You can say it. Okay. On July 18th, we will be discussing Book Lovers with Emily Henry. Wow. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. How <laughs> did you do that? Oh. Is my screen sharing? Yes, it, it is. is. Okay, yay. Okay. Wow. Wow. Yay. Okay, We're and excited. I'm so excited Hope about this. Are, I need to be. It's a small town. It's a bookstore to rescue. What else does a reader need? Right? Exactly. You got that right. Nice. Good get. Good, good, good. Oh, the, okay. Everyone's in the chat's getting excited. Oh, Yay. yeah. I need to look. Yay. Look at you all getting so sophisticated and upscale and pulling in the bigger, <laughs> pulling in the biggies. Oh. Uh, we just do what we can. Oh, yeah. Little old yep. us. So now we have a little while <laughs> to wait for August and September. Yeah, that'll right. be at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ready for another book? Yeah. Yes. Can you give us another pick? Maybe. Or two. Oh, now he's going to, well, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> this book, I, um, I, hmm, this comes out on and June 14th, so not far from now. And it's um, something that I, well, I don't want to say it. No, I, I, I love this one way more than this author's first book. So from the author of Evie Drake Takes Over, we're going to be treated to this book called Flying Solo by Linda Holmes. And if anybody I has read Evie too. Drake, it's a great cover, right? I have heard so many great things about this book. Mary Kate, I think it was Mary Kate Andrews. Yeah. Who, she mentioned it on um, at the launch party. We were talking. I don't yeah. remember, but yeah. yeah. And I'm like going like, I've already read it. It's great. <laughs> Cutting off her thunder, you know, like I tend to do. Anyway, so this is from the author of Evie Drake 
uh, takes over. The uh, main character is Lori, and she has a recently canceled wedding. So she has moved, goes from, I think she's Seattle, back to her hometown in Maine to kind of lick her wounds. But also she's in charge of de uh, dealing with her favorite Aunt Dot's uh, estate. So when she's there, she's got all these boxes to go through and she doesn't know what she's going to do. And she's kind of like freaking out over her, the canceled wedding. Uh, she's got um, all, a good friend there and uh, there's some movers. And then she kind of goes to the town library. There's a big library in it. And she mm -hmm. meets an old friend that she used to be dating in high school. And he's like, he's quite hot, apparently, according to the book. <laughs> And so she meets a hot librarian and they kind of like become friends again and kind of, I don't know if they rekindle it or not, but um, anyway. Hot librarians so, are my fave. Let's just, <laughs> let's just say that. But he's such a nice guy in town, but there's not only him, but there's another one of the movers. And what, what she does is as she's going through all of her aunt's pictures and things, this kind of mystery develops and she finds this wooden duck decoy that she thinks might be worth something or not. So she has, gets the help of a, kind of a, a, an estate salesperson who kind of looks into it and it's not really much worth much, but something about it. She keeps it. She doesn't get rid of it. Like she does other things. And then it turns up missing. Ba -ba -bum -bum -bum. And then it, it sets her on this journey to kind of find out what happened to it. But at the same time, she's getting to know her wild aunt in a whole different angle and exploring her own life and what's, what's going to happen for her next. So it's a journey of self-discovery and it's such a great book. And it's like, um, at the end, it's like, there's many, many paths to love. There's many, many paths to um, flying solo. And it's just, it's so well written. It's so, the characters are just amazing. You're going to fall in love with them. So if you liked Eleanor Oliphant, you're going to love this one. Yes, I nice. did. Boom. <laughs> Another one already added. Very I hope cool. so. Oh, it's so worth it. Like if it, all these books are worth it. I know. Lisa, would you Sounds like, like library that? shenanigans ensue. <laughs> I just, oh I just, my gosh. I only or not. Thirsty. Or not. <laughs> or not. Because they kind of have to explore why they're not, why they never were together. And there's, there's just a lot going on. Plus her family, like you meet, get to meet her whole family. She's, she's got siblings and um, they're all different. And she's the one that was close to the aunt. So she's the one that has to come back and they can't be bothered with dealing with this house and all the things in it. But mm. <laughs> I have to say, generally, I'm I am predisposed to liking books involving uh, bookstores and libraries. So <laughs> and there's a lot out there yeah. there and a, lot. a lot coming out still, too. Yeah. So Absolutely. Fun. Okay, who's next? Brenda, do you want to go or you want me to go? Um, I'll go. Okay, this is my um this is my pick for when you've just read something like Surviving Savannah or The Forest of Vanishing Stars. <laughs> <laughs> and you need to wait a few days before you read something else. This actually yeah. came out in July of 2020. And it features a plus size heroine named B. Schumacher. <laughs> and um, it's called <laughs> One to Watch. And it's a it's a it's a rom com, but it's just it's really well done. It's sort of um if you're a fan of the the reality shows like The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, right. This kind of pulls the curtain back on that whole process because B is a, a plus size um, fashion blogger who pretty much doesn't have anything to do with that whole scene of the reality shows because she thinks they're so fake and so one dimensional and who they accept and things kind of change and she gets invited to be the main squeeze is what the show is called. And so, <laughs> I love that title. <laughs> I know I love it too and it kind of goes from there as she's the main squeeze and has all of these suitors coming to to visit her but I'm bum but I'm bum okay Lisa okay Lisa turn. okay now my next pick 
is a book I'm super excited about. I haven't read it yet, but I just got it from, from NetGalley and I've been waiting patiently for it. Um, as many of you know, last year, The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin was one of my favorite books. It's a YA book. Mm -hmm. Not only was it a great book, it was probably the most beautiful cover and the most beautiful naked book really that know. I've ever had or seen. So her follow, well, it's not a follow-up. This is a completely different book, different story, but it's her second um, novel. And it is called Wild is the Witch. And it is described as magical, romantic, atmospheric, and beautifully written. All Ooh. things we are learning are the hallmarks of Griffin's work. That's what Kristen Dwyer called it. That's um, awesome. It sounds like, oh, here, let me share the cover with you guys. I want to read an atmospheric book, so I think I'll. <laughs> it's a, it is a standalone. It's like an enemies to lovers, contemporary fantasy um it sounds like it's gonna be great I'm trying to share my screen again let's see if it'll let me share it and it comes out on August 2nd that's when it will be out in the world so it's available for pre-order now I don't want to accidentally share something else so I'm taking my time there it is <laughs> The oh, uh, what a great cover. Love the feathers. And it sounds sounds pretty good. So that's my pick. I'm going to be probably diving in that soon, too. And if you're on NetGalley, it's available to request. Yay, that looks pretty awesome. I know I wanted to share this other image from her website that is so cool and it's having I'm having a hard time getting it to to load so we'll just stick with that you can okay. pop it in the comments after where is which is where I'll put the recipe for the cocktail oh that's a great idea. okay yeah, there. Mm -hmm. oh wait here we go I think I can do it here and it just, it's a, it's a different version of the cover, but it shows, yeah, here we are. It has questions. So what will he say if I were to tell him I cursed him? If I were to look him directly in the eye and tell him I am a witch. <laughs> Ooh. A witch. So that's my pick. Very cute. All right, Yay. that's pretty Love dramatic. It. <laughs> Love it. One thing about I wish it, I had my nature of witches to show that cover since I talked about it, but it's, I think I put it back up on my shelf. <laughs> that is an awesome cover. I tell you, we're, we're, we're getting a pretty broad range of books tonight. It's, it's yeah. pretty nice. <laughs> I think sure. Brenda, so, hmm? isn't Brenda, you're up. I'm up. Okay, this will be my final pick. And we've talked about, well, we haven't talked about this book. We, in the larger sense of the book club, have talked about this book already. But I am recommending it because I'm fairly new to audiobooks. And I don't find a lot of them that I like and can listen to for a long period of time. But this book that came out in April of this year has been just awesome. And it is... Yeah. Lost and Found in Paris by Lynn yes, yes, nice. yes, yes. I know she was just on Friends in Fiction, but I really have to say I thoroughly enjoyed the audio book. The storyline is about um, about Joan, who is a, I guess you would say an art museum um, curator, and but she is uh, has the burden of having some very famous parents. Her her uh, father is a, a famous artist, and her mother is a supermodel. Um, so it's, it's a story about a mystery related to her father and there's, you know, famous parents and aging rock stars. And of course, Paris doesn't hurt either, but I just really enjoyed the audio version of that book. Yeah. And a big mystery. Oh you know, yeah. That happened. There's a big mystery there. And I'm big telling mystery. you, one of the best endings it wraps itself up so beautifully. Leon is such a talent and 
Um, I don't know if people, I'm sure, read the Sweeney Sisters last year mm. or the year before. I this did. is a, not her next book. And oh my God, she's so talented. She, she has a great podcast too, by the way. I don't know if people know this about, it's called oh. the Sat- Satellite Sisters. And That's right, with her sisters. Yes. And it, it started out with, the, I think there's five of them, and they lived all around the world. And they would get together to do a radio show back in the day. Uh, from wherever they were, just talk about their week and what they're watching, what they're reading and things about the world and the Olympics and everything. Anyway, they're fascinating. They are fascinating. I listened to to an episode of that just this week. So that's pretty. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Yeah, and they're, what a great they're lovely. Way, what a great way to to just keep up with your family and you know yeah. <laughs> let other people enjoy it, too. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. Awesome. What? Well, I okay. have kind of lost track. Who's next? Who's next on our? Or do we announce? It's Ron's this? turn. Ron's turn. Okay. Do you want to do another round and then we'll um mm-hmm. talk well, about we your book more clubs? From you. I have one left, but I know you have a couple. So if you want to do two, you can. Oh well, okay. Get ready for this one, everybody. I. I was blown away by this book and I started reading it and I just started smiling ear to ear. Everything about it was um, just hit spot on. And it's called, it's a crazy title, Iona Iverson's Rules for Commuting. (laughs) And it's Claire Pooley who published the Authenticity Project um, a couple of years ago. And the Iona Iverson is this... um, She's she's a middle aged woman. She this is all takes place in London, and uh, she she's kind of an online psychologist for a magazine, or she's a magazine writer for, for psychology. But she takes the same train every day, ten stops from her home to where her work is. But all along the way, and it starts out people that like they don't talk on the train. People are just they don't talk. Well, um, there's an and she has nicknames for people. So there's this guy called um, I wrote it down so I could say it right. Do, do, do. what's his name oh s- smart but sexist man spreader so she has crazy <laughs> nicknames for people on this thing and something happens so the man spreader one day chokes on a grape and it makes all of these there's a there's a nurse on the uh, male nurse that's on the train and um so he helps and it just starts all of these people kind of building a community and she becomes like Auntie Mame. If anybody remembers that old Rosalind oh Russell movie, gosh, yes. not the Lucia Ball <laughs> movie, because that was crap, but the um, the other one. And it was so good. And she starts to kind of like look at people and talk to people. And it's great because she's facing um ageism at work and she's uh, also like trying to relate to people and she's got her own past and her own life that we learn about which is like amazing um but it's all about like what if people do reach out and then it's all takes place along these 10 stops on the train and where people get on and oh. off it is very important to the story and it's it's it takes place in london but this the this woman um claire pooley is absolutely hysterical and she creates characters that you just want to hang out with and you want to be part of their life and I, and I know that um Patty mentioned Mary Laura Philpot well she has a little thing about it she wrote why don't I ever meet people this delightful on a train it's the everybody's stories are great and they kind of all help each other and 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 of course um Auntie Mame starts plotting a lot of different things for people and it's just a it's delightful and it's just put it on your put it on your pile it's coming out June 7th awesome nice yes oh I love this book (laughs) can you repeat the title and the author one more time what for those I I know Iona Iverson's Rules for Commuting, and it's Claire Pooley. I love um, that title. I'll put the covers in the in the ch- in the comments too afterwards. So, oh, okay, that would be great. Yeah, I just uh. well, I will give you another quick one. 
this because we kind of alluded to this that um, Patty and I just in dropped today on our podcast today we did mythology comes to life and we one was Jennifer Saint which was fiction and it's all about Electra and a reimagining of the uh, the legend of Electra and what I didn't understand or what I didn't say I didn't quite get because I, I used to hate mythology in school I really did I swear to just being honest I was like oh <laughs> do we have to talk about this crap um, but. <laughs> But these two authors that we interviewed just woke it up in me. And so you can almost um, trace every story that's told in modern times back to mythology. And also what both did, uh, like Jennifer Saints Electra, well, that's fiction. Um, and then, then we have Natalie Haynes, who's this book has been on the New York Times bestseller list now for, I think, four weeks maybe five wow. it's called pandora's jar and it's little sections of taking people that we like pandora we always have this image she had a box she opened it up it put all the ills of the world out there guess what so she's taken she's a deep dive she's what she calls a classicist so she, and but she's also a former stand-up comedian so you can imagine those two together it's just hysterical but P pandora didn't have a box and she didn't and she had a jar <laughs> if that even if that even because she debunks all these things she brings the women's stories to light and shows how men pushed them for their own um for their own gain behind the scenes when really a lot of these women and it's a whole bunch of things if nothing else i now know how to say climanestra <laughs> but, <this laughs> but she but she she does about i think it's nine different um women in myths and there's um helen of troy um medusa's in here a little bit and i wanted to, her to to kind of talk all about it she said well my next novels about medusa let's just wait till that i'm like okay whatever <laughs> and then Eurydice and uh, Medea, Penelope, they're, they're all in here. But she pulls them apart and she retells them in a way that's accessible and funny. And if you haven't listened to this podcast, do yourself a favor. Don't be turned off by the mythology. She is hysterical. She's hysterical. Anyway. Awesome. That sounds so that's good. Amazing. It's so good. And it, that's and why the it's TV on the TVR Mountain Explodes. I know. But it's great because you can, again, you can read about one of these women at a time. You don't have to sit and read the whole book. You say, okay, yeah. going to bed now, but I'll pick yeah. it up tomorrow because I love it. And I love that yeah, title, Pandora's Jar. Yes. Well, she, and she did, she went through like old paintings, old writings. Um, she did extensive research to uh, debunk what the males who have been telling these stories have have brought forth as the as what these women were all about and in a lot of times they were put in like second tier and behind the scenes but they were way more than that and it's all in here awesome okay. well, I, I will make my last final um i'll make mine quick so we can get on to the august and september announcement um, mine is called Campfire Confessions by Christine Ochu. I hope I am. Whoops. Am I? Okay. Sorry. Oh, nice. I love the cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had yeah. it set to share my screen and I couldn't see myself. So I'm like, here's the book. And it was <laughs> books right here. Yeah. And it's a great book about friendship. It's about these three best friends. Um, Annie, Sandra, and Joe, and they grew up in this small town, and Joe, no, I'm sorry, Annie, she's the one who's married to a pastor, she never left her town, and most people think she's a big saint, but what they don't know is she's been keeping a very big secret that even her best friends didn't know, mm. so when that secret comes to light, her best friends come back home, to be with her and help her deal with everything and it goes from one shenanigan to another um oh. hilarious there's canoeing woods camp campfires lots of secrets coming out by the campfire but one thing that they discover is that one night of letting all your secrets out is not enough time to deal with the fallout from your secrets. Mm. Oh, it's mm. like a Pandora's jar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, indeed. That's right, it is. 
so it's I started it and it's it's really good it's out now it came out in March so that's Campfire Confessions by Christine Uchu or Otu nice. sorry if I'm butchering her name very nice Looks like your piles at your homes are getting to be like mine with these stacks. Uh, up and up and up and up. I know. I do I know. have. And I do have a pile. I know. And I do want to give a quick shout out all the time. Quick shout out. This is Leslie's oh, new book. Leslie. It's coming out June twenty eighth, and I have it a copy is equal to before everyone else. And this one is the sequel. So check out Leslie. She's active on Facebook and Instagram. But I did want to and give her a quick shout tonight. out. I didn't know she was going to be watching tonight. But I, I, she was. I'm not sure she still is. I'm looking around like she's sitting here. I know. Um, she's, she's everywhere, by the way. <laughs> she was just she? Out, out in San Diego. <laughs> and she, in fact, she just did an event, I think, with... Um, I am not. Oh, oh, I could be wrong, us. but Lee she and was Dolan. Out in L.A. somewhere or something. Yeah, I think she did a, a thing with Lee and Dolan. She'll tell us in the in the chat if she's still there. Yeah. Okay, I will go ahead and announce. I'll announce August, Brenda, and you can announce September. How about September. That? Okay. And I, I do have one more to book, but then. Oh yeah, we definitely at, want at the more end. Books at, after we'll close, we'll close out there. Okay. Yeah, we'll close out with your. Um, Oh, yeah, Leslie is still in the chat. So, hey, okay. So, on August 15th, oh, our book dear. club pick is The Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth. How Yay! did you do that? Isn't she, she on the is. other side of the world? She is. She, she is. She will be night. joining us live from Australia at She's... 9 a.m. on Tuesday, her time. Holy moly. <laughs> and she was just here in Cleveland and I had a conflict. I couldn't go see her. Oh, oh I no. wanted to see her, but I, I couldn't make the drive to Greenville. Oh. We we're very excited to have her on. She is so fun and so just a funny and a dream and so we're super excited and y'all aren't even gonna talk to me soon no no you <laughs> you are our co-host you're stuck with us Librarian she was part in there she's so cute because she goes well I'm gonna put it in my she goes I'm I put it in my journal and I was like I guess that's like planner for us or calendar she's like I've got it in my journal for 9 a.m on Tuesday and I went seven eight and i was like i guess that's right <laughs> it's 7 p.m eastern for us on monday so oh right 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 yeah. maybe we'll have coffee oh, with her during yeah. that book club <laughs> or you but know we're excited and so is she so mark your calendars yay that's all awesome right. wow look at you all and all right, shall we? the final one you go ahead brenda all right, the final one, which will be September 19th for the book club, for our September pick, who's someone who is on tour right now and who actually may be watching, um, is Kimberly Brock and the Lost Book of Eleanor mm. Dare, which I am so excited about. Yay! Because I love this story. I'm super excited <laughs> for this one, too. The story is so amazing. What a great book. Yay, oh. oh she's like a new favorite for me i love it i know love it. i love her i love the color the cover the backstory the oh i i'm telling you i know and she's on a pretty intense tour right now with the lost book of eleanor dare she's been yeah. yeah she left greenville at like 5 a.m she told me today and she said i'm gonna try to be there tonight and she was she is there she's here oh she's here yeah what a so great lineup excited, kimberly she said yay you guys are the best yippee no you're the best thank you she's the best yeah she's oh, like, oh my god well, it was good for her though this book i think everybody's uh loving and buying and yes eating it up and it's so well written and congratulations kimberly it's been like a 
Southern independent booksellers um, bestseller for weeks now. Yeah. Yeah. At least a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Now I feel like we've, we've done all of our secrets. Well, we have one more date we can announce. We have our next happy hour with Ron Block oh. on a date that I didn't write down. Uh oh. Let so me give look. me a second to retreat. Because I didn't write that one down either. You have been having a lot of shenanigans, is what you've been I, doing. You guys, I'm going to share something personal. I just have to let it out. It's It's been a week. It's been a month. I've had a time. Brenda has been an amazing support. I have had a really rough go, but things are looking up for me. Mm, good. And I feel I'm just happy. Um, oh, I'm so happy. glad to hear that, Lisa. I'm so, so glad because you were in a bad spot for a while, but you kept your yeah. sunny disposition and I kept it all on my face. And now I'm gonna cry, so I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. Oh, okay. we're gonna don't just want you to do that. We're gonna have shenanigans. I was gonna Things say are good. Things let's are go great. back to let's go back to book lovers, the younger wife, and the lost. <laughs> yes, let's do that. And I'll find the date. I'm looking. Give me one second. It's August 19th. I think so. I feel like I know it's in August because we need to announce October, November, and December. Pretty, um... And we want to make sure people have time to get those books. Um... This is pretty sad because I do not have that one at the ready. And the three it of is us August 19th. Just, we August literally 19th. just talked. Hey, it is. Okay. Okay, August nineteenth at fired. seven p.m. <laughs> no, August nineteenth. I mean, yeah, we the three of us literally just talked about this yesterday. So August nineteenth, seven p.m. Okay. Have your TBRs ready to be exploded again. Oh yeah, yeah. And we might have a special guest. I don't know yet. If we do, we we may tell Ron. Maybe we won't. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a secret. <laughs> it'll be a campfire confession <laughs> oh that's funny oh are, you guys are evil <laughs> y'all are evil <laughs> okay you ready for yes yeah, yeah, leave it in close okay so i final recommendation I loved Iona Iverson trust me I, I mean I love all these books but this one I am so excited about because I we're finalizing hopefully a podcast episode with him I already have him coming to the library so I'm going to have a virtual event for him uh coming up but he is the co-creator of how I met your mother awesome anybody who's the show he's going to recognize a lot of that same style pacing and humor in this but he's written his Love first it. novel and it's called the mutual friend Ooh, cool. by carter bays i and love that cover isn't it great yeah, yeah the covers great, are just great, great. lately have been awesome and when is that one coming out june 7th okay so that one's pretty soon it is pretty soon so get get your pre-orders in and get going with it so as i said he's the co-creator of how i met your mother but it's a story about um alice and alice alice quick is her name and she's kind of a mess when we meet her in the beginning of the book she's um she just got kicked out of her room her um apartment so she doesn't know have a place to live she's kind of a failed nanny she doesn't know what's going on in her life and she all she wants to do is to take the mcat and so she's got her whole phone that's got all these little reminders of apply for it so she always opens up the application to go to medical school and, and take the mcat but then something gets in the way so it starts um getting you to realize that the book is all about distraction takes place in 2015 and it's about the, the the mix between our real lives and our lives in front of a screen 
And it's all, so everybody, and, and I have to say, I was so guilty of a lot of this stuff because a lot of people, they, it, they you know, it's that hop around mentality. So it's like, oh, look at this. Oh, wait, I, I can buy this book over here. Oh, wait, I need to, oh, look at that. Fruit. Bing, oh, look at this health bing. thing. And bing, bing, bing. And pretty soon you're down a rabbit hole and you don't know, <laughs> you don't know how you got there. So you're totally distracted, not only from what you're setting out to do, but to other people around you. And um, it, it's, it's um, how do I describe it? It is hysterically funny. So Alice has a brother who's a multi-million dollar tech wizard and he's got a beautiful wife and she, um, she, she moves into a new apartment with a real quirky roommate who kind of takes her to all these different parties and things. But it's all about how we deal with distraction. How do we deal with distraction? How do we focus to get where we're going? But at the same time, everything is so funny. The observations that he writes about are hysterical. And it takes place in 2015, um, which I asked him about when I interviewed him. And he said it was because he didn't want to have to um, incorporate anything about COVID or the political climate. And it's just a it's just a, a dead on thing about New York and be living in New York, but his characters are, are, are people like, just like if you watch how I met your mother, you fall in love with those characters. If you're a fan of the show, yeah. a lot of these, these people too, they do the same thing. You fall in love with them. You want them to do well. Like her tech brother has this unreal religious conversion in the middle of everything that just throws everything up in the air. And like all oh, of the wow. characters are amazing. Anyway. So I asked him about um, how, where this story came from. And he puts it out there. So this is not a secret. How did, where'd you get the idea for this? And it was because he was having lunch with his sister and his wife was trying to get a hold of him to tell him that she was about to, um, or that she was pregnant with their first child. And he kept like trying to do both things. And, and his sister got mad at him and started giving him the riot act for like being distracted and not paying attention to her. And he's like, but, 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 but. And the, so that kind of started the whole idea. Like, what does that mean for society in general and the bigger picture? And he just yeah, explores yeah. it so beautifully in this and funny. So it's very funny on the surface, but it's also kind of a commentary about society and all of us and how we get easily distracted. And it's just such a great book. Oh, that sounds awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes. And another book to add one more time, the cover and the title, the For mutual friend, ran out. <laughs> my pen ran out. So the oh. mutual friend by Carter Bays. <laughs> nice. That sounds so good. I love the yeah. writing on that show. So yeah, I'm well, excited for that. That sounds really good. Yeah. And wow. I've already got, I've already got a stack on my desk that have of things for the next one. Next happy hour. So get I ready. Know. We have, I have, yeah, <laughs> we're going to start just chatting it up all the time. <laughs> Books all the time. <laughs> every Friday, Friday, happy hour. Friday nights. <laughs> oh goodness. Oh. Ron, I feel like it would be a disservice if we did not let you talk about the podcast before we leave. Oh, um, okay. So I, I talked about the mythology. Mm -hmm. um, and really, if you want to go back and listen to the bomb shelter episode that we did with Laura, Mary Laura Philpott. I think I it's will. Phenomenal. It's like, it's don't tell anybody else, but one of my favorites that we've ever done because it was just so eye-opening. And what I find on the podcast is people... They, they're in a room, they're on a microphone, they're talking to us, they don't think other people are hearing them. So they really say a lot of things that, you know, they might not, uh, they reveal a lot. Yeah. Anyway. So over the next couple of weeks, um, so next week, believe it or not, are you ready for this? Next Friday, we'll drop the 50th episode of Writer's Block Podcast. No way. 50. 50. Wow. 50. Yeah. Yeah, I can so hardly believe it myself. I know, right? It's a big shenanigan. I know that mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Cheers to that. <laughs> okay, we Cheers can have no more you, shenanigans. Cheers I'm to you, out. Ron. Thank you. It's been um just. Oh, the... sorry. Cheers <laughs> to you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been just such a great ride. I mean, those friends in fiction uh, authors have been so kind and generous, yeah. and I, I feel like I lived in the like on maybe the first floor and they lived on the penthouse and now they've brought me up almost <laughs> to the penthouse. <laughs> they've been just great. And, and I love, especially um, 
Natalie Haynes, the one who did the Pandora's jar, she was so sharing um, our episode on social media. And she's saying things like, what a great idea to have the guest, another writer, and then a librarian who is a reader and put those perspectives together to create this. Ep- and it's true. I learned so That's much. Cool. And I love when the, when the author and the guest talk about things that I don't know about, but it's a, their, their connection is here and my connection is a reader. So it's this amazing triad of different yeah. viewpoints that comes together. And it's just developing into um, just, I love it. I love, love, love it. So Real quickly. We have lots of congrats in the chat. Oh, I'm going to go back and look at them. A lot. Oh. And Joe Dina says, have you had Adriana Trigiani on the podcast yet? She is going to be on the um, the Wednesday live show next week. And yep. Adriana would do the podcast with me in a heartbeat. But what we try to do is not duplicate. So we and so we actually believe it or not. And here's a little secret: we have some arguments sometimes behind the scenes about what <laughs> which they're going to platform they're going to be on. So I don't I often win. No, it's we are <laughs> right because we. And I, I, there's a couple of really good examples of that, but well, um, lucky for Brenda and I, we can pick from both. That's true. You can. You can. <laughs> and um, but I, I'm sure I'll, I will do something with like Adri when the paperback comes out, maybe or something and maybe even come up with a whole new topic because, you know, she's a good friend and I, I love her and I, I can't wait to um, as she's on tour right now and just busy as I'll get out. But we'll, we'll spend some time when she's back home. Anyway, that's good. So I'll next week on the 50th episode is two really, really good historical fiction novels. Kelly Stewart with the Master Craftsman about the, um, you know, I remember back when uh, the Romanovs, they actually hoarded all these Fabergé eggs and they um, put them in, they hid them in things. And so somebody buys something off of like, I think it's in America and they buy a, a product and they look at it and they think, oh, this is junk. And they start tearing it apart. And there's one of those Fabergé eggs in it in the modern time that goes back and kind of like tells the story about the hunt for the Fabergé egg. It's so cool. Oh, wow. That sounds really That's interesting. Awesome. I know. And then the other is um, she's joined all, on the second part of it is Amy Runyon as for school for German brides which is another yep. i keep thinking okay enough with the world war ii and the nazis but you know what there's I so know. many stories to tell still and they're so fresh there's and they're so, so many interesting and i get my interest reinvigorated and this was one where um and i didn't know they did this people who want who were supposed to become who were chosen by the ss officers and the higher up you were in it you had a better pick or you had more control the per- person that you want to marry gets sent to these schools to teach them how to be a, a, a wife of an SS officer, this and this and this. But of course, the story is about these girls who don't want to be what they're being forced to be. So it's, it kind of goes from there and it's really great. And oh, then um, awesome. I know. Good. And then the week after that, we have Joy Calloway with the Grand Design. She was supposed to be on Friends and Fiction one night and there was some technical glitches. And so we decided that we would give her a lot more focused attention in the podcast rather than at the after show so so she's going to be on we with us. are big fans of joy because she joined us at the epigraph literary festival she was on our session yes that's right that's right it was amazing so i'm excited yeah, to yeah, hear i can't that. yeah i can't wait for that one to come out so that's what i can share for now we're working on a whole bunch of things and hopefully people will go gaga for them awesome yeah Yay. oh yeah. we're certainly looking forward to those podcasts ron Thank I you. And I tell I you, we it. have gone, we have gone over way over, tonight. way I over, know. way, oh. way fast. But well, I'll just thing. do a quick recap as a reminder okay. for the dates. So July 18th is going to be Book Lovers by Emily Henry, Can't and then August 15th we have The Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth. Can't believe you August got her. August 19th is our Happy Hour with Ron Block. Can't believe you got him. <laughs> I know he was hard. He was tough. He was a tough nut to crack. He held um, out, held out. <laughs> September 19th is the lost book of Eleanor Dare with Kimberly Brock. Yay. Yay. And also I can share now um, for those that attended the Epigraph Literary Festival, the amazing 
creator, Victoria at Biblio Lifestyle, has announced, it hasn't really been publicly. If you were there, she announced it, but I can share that she's doing another one, another free virtual event, September 22nd through 24th. So you can mark your calendars for that too. That was so much fun. So much fun. Oh, it was. I loved it. Yeah, that, that festival was a great idea. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lisa, for those dates. I got nothing yeah. to, to top that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we want to remind everyone to join us on May 16th to talk about this book. Yes. How when Ghosts we... Come Home with Wiley Cash. One of my all-time favorite writers. Yep. Oh, and I'm listening yep. to that one right now. So that's it's excited. Fantastic on audio. Such I think an I'm amazing to it. story. I mean, it's really an amazing it it, it, get, it gets you from the beginning. Yes. Very well, because cool. he gets woken up by the plane coming in. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know, just the whole thing. Yeah. So well, we are just delighted to have you again tonight, Ron, and can't oh my thank gosh. you enough oh my for gosh. joining us. I know, we couldn't do this without you. Well, you could, you know you could, but I we have always love, I always love these. I, they're my, one of my favorite things to do, so I'm happy to be here. Yay, thank you so well, much. Thanks so much, and we will see you the next time. Yep, right thanks, on. everyone, for joining us. Happy yes, Mother's thank Day. you. Happy reading. Good night. Night. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun. That was fun. We went over. Oh, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> And we're we're still live. We kind of went into the after sure. show right away, so we really don't have an <laughs> well we can we can just leave it at this what a great oh my gosh what a great number of books to put on our tbr list i just i'm gonna have to go back and watch it because my pen i have this purple pen i love purple i love prince i love purple rain leslie hooten purple rain it ran out of ink <laughs> Right when I halfway through the show and I'm like, I didn't want to make a lot of noise with my microphone, you know, and I'm well, lifting things and I'm trying not to look like it, duh, but I was like, it's oh, not well. like you can't watch it again either. Lisa, yeah, I was like, that. I'm just gonna have to watch it back. But sometimes I don't like to watch it back because I don't like to look at myself. Oh, me neither. I, I really can hardly stand to look to do I am it, but su I, super I judgy on myself. I so, know. But oh, well. <laughs> I had that conversation with someone else today about how we're so critical of our own, you know, nit, you know, nitpicky little things. But yeah, it's hard for me to do that too. But Ron did say he was going to come back and uh, put the books in the chat. Yes. And so we can let everybody know that's going to happen. And we'll also be, um, we'll also be putting the upcoming picks on the book club page as well yep. now that we've announced them at the happy hour yep we'll add the events on the event tab with the graphics and I'm excited I feel like we kept the secret like normally we tell like the whole team knows but I don't think Anissa we didn't tell Anissa and we didn't tell Jodina I'm pretty sure I, I think Jodina knew July but I don't think they knew August or September. And Brenda and I have been sitting on this for months. Yes, we have. And we kept a secret. I'm proud of us. <laughs> oh yeah, Anissa's saying no, she didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. We kept it from everybody. We were like, nobody knows. No chances of anybody finding out. <laughs> Oh yes, um, uh, Susan. Thank you said, guys for hanging in with us. So we still have, we still have a good amount of people live with us. So thanks for hanging out. I know that's awesome. They were actually saying Susan actually asked if we were having an after show. So we can. Such as it is, <laughs> here it is. Ah. So for those of you, well, this will this will be on. Oh, who cares? 
for those of you that are hanging out still, I got a new job and I'm excited about it. Congratulations. Um, I don't start for a while. I, you know, I'm finishing out my current employment. I, I have a great employer currently. It's just not the right fit for right now. And um, so I'm just, I'm excited. I feel like things are changing and a new you know, beginning. getting better, new beginnings. And so that's why I'm kind of out of it. But it's like, you know how something you felt like you've had a weight on your shoulders for so long that you've been carrying by yourself that's finally lifted where you should be celebrating and this. And it was like, at first I almost felt guilty. Like, uh Oh, everything's good. That means something bad's going to happen. It's like, why Aww. don't think that way? No, Please, what you are you got, doing to yourself? You celebrate. And, you're and today happy. I've been happy. I'm just like, it, it's good. I'm happy, happy hour. So and you're getting lots of congratulations in the chat, but you should oh, be thank you excited guys. and proud. Thank you. I think it's going to yeah. be great for you. I'm excited. Maria, no, I am not leaving. I am not leaving you guys. It will take a lot okay. more than a, new, than a new job to get rid of me. So I'm going to be here as long as my PB is by my side. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> That's too funny. That's too funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's just being really great in the chat. So thank you so much. A, a nice thing. And many of many of y'all are celebrating Mother's Day this weekend. So I wish you all, you know, very, very nice holidays and yeah. fun time spent with loved ones, whoever they are. Yep. As Ron said, it doesn't have to be your mother to celebrate her. Right. Well, that's okay. kind of, that kind of sounds like a closing, Lisa. <laughs> no, it's like, oh, that is kind of like a closing. Yeah. Say so thank you, wow. guys. We love you guys. We've got so many mm -hmm. fun things coming up. And we'll have some more announcements before our next happy hour. I we, was thinking we might. We have. We won't say yet. Some other things in the works. Up our sleeves. My well, evil with that, everyone with that everyone have a wonderful friday night we've been we've enjoyed spending it with you and and increasing our uh tbr pile and hope you have a wonderful weekend good night bye, -bye.